Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on media, focusing on definitions of culture. Sociologists offer varying definitions of what culture is and the different types of culture that exist within a society. It's important to differentiate between these different definitions, especially when analysing the impacts of media on culture. A general definition of culture is that it is the norms and values of a particular group within society, that culture is a social construction and varies from one society to the next. Many sociologists argue that culture is transmitted through the process of socialisation, either primary or secondary socialisation, and this is where the media helps people to understand the norms and values of the culture we live in. Other sociologists suggest that culture is the social elements of the world we live in, rather than the organic and natural things that surround us. Culture is language, dress, food, music, the arts, ceremonies and rituals that are part of our everyday life. And as such, these vary, and there are different ways of categorising cultures that sociologists use. What is commonly described as culture is what sociologists call high culture. This is the cultural knowledge that is perceived as being of a higher value in society. It often reflects the tastes, attitudes and choices of the elites in society. And this is often part of our national heritage or seen as canonical. For example, the works of Shakespeare and Charles Dickens are both perceived to be high culture forms of literature, despite their origins as part of popular culture in their time. Other elements of high culture include the arts, theatre, ballet, opera, which are more likely to be attended by the more affluent in society. However, with the growth of media, there is increased access to these forms of high culture. Other examples include clothing, with fine tailoring and high-end fashion brands being seen as having higher value. Classical music is another example, as is historical knowledge, particularly of the classics and political figures through time. High culture is often passed down through the education system due to the belief that it has higher value and can facilitate social mobility. Yet despite the growth of the media, many choose not to access this form of culture as it doesn't reflect their own lives. A more traditional form of culture is folk culture, which is largely based upon local and regional ways of life, often having associations with a historical way of living in a specific area. In the UK, folk culture can be seen through regional variations in celebrations and rituals. For example, folk culture is associated with the four nations within the UK. Unique events such as the Highland Games in Northern Scotland, Irish dancing and Morris dancing in rural communities in England. Folk culture can also incorporate regional variations in accents and dialects and traditions within different parts of the UK. This is more pronounced elsewhere in the world with many variations of indigenous folk cultures from Native Americans to Aboriginals in Australia. While many folk cultures remain, critical theorists such as Simmel argue that the growth of the media has led to mass culture replacing folk culture as people become more similar in their tastes and attitudes. And this can be seen on a global scale in the latter part of the 20th and early 21st century as the spread of the media leads to a theoretically homogeneous global culture. Mass or popular culture refers to the norms, values, tastes and attitudes of the masses. Media has had a large impact on the development of mass culture through advertising goods and services that become part of society's culture. While mass cultures are argued to reflect the value consensus of society, critics argue that mass culture is not organic, but rather produced and controlled by those in power and these norms and values are transmitted through the media. Mass culture is produced and packaged for individuals to consume and is seen as being inferior to high culture. Primetime television, blockbuster movies and pop music are perceived to have lower cultural value. They are often argued to be cheap distractions from more serious issues, with Marcuse arguing that the creation of mass culture is a way of diverting attention away from the exploitation and alienation that workers endure. If individuals can immerse themselves in the consumption of mass-produced goods and distract themselves with light entertainment, 
they will not revolt, according to critical theorists. However, this fails to take into account that often mass culture incorporates elements of other cultures, evolving to address social changes rather than being force-fed to the masses. For example, how fashion and music draw influences from across the world, and how TV and films from non-English speaking nations, such as the Netflix program Squid Game from South Korea and anime from Japan, became part of mainstream mass culture. In contemporary society, it's argued that global culture has become the most dominant form of culture in society, and this is due to the process of globalization. The ability for people to move from one nation to another and, considering the role of the media, to access cultures from other nations has led to the evolution of greater cultural homogeneity in society. Globally, big brands such as McDonald's, Nike and Coca-Cola have become dominant across the world, whilst TV programmes are often translated into formats for multiple nations. For example, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is broadcast in over a hundred nations with their own national version. Other talent shows and reality formats are broadcast with national variations. Strictly Come Dancing, The Voice, X Factor, Big Brother, Britain's Got Talent and The Masked Singer all have been formatted for other nations. This occurs with other elements of culture. Fast food franchises, fashion brands and sports coverage mean that mass culture is becoming increasingly homogeneous. However, this has led critics to argue that global culture, like mass culture, is not organic and is actually forced. They argue that this global culture actually reflects Western culture and is a form of cultural imperialism that is used to spread messages of capitalism across the globe. The media is complicit in this, especially with the emergence of media companies into global conglomerates that control output and look to profit from their global reach. That concludes this Cheetah to You sociology topic video on media, focusing on definitions of culture. Thanks for watching.